it's so fascinating because the thing about All My Children is that its mainstay audience is not only women, but it has a cult college following and sports teams also watch it. It is also the most VCR tape show in daytime. I went behind the scenes to meet the actors who play all of those complex characters. As All My Children passionately plows into its 22nd season, there is one thing fans can always expect, the unexpected. Life is just so full of changes, isn't it? All the time, constant change, not much you can hold on to. That philosophy just oh, might be the right. winning formula for one of television's best-loved soaps. Pine Valley has always been a fantasy world of intrigue and seduction, where the romance is always steamy. Where? I'm Dimitri Merrick. You're in my home in Wildwood. Home? My home, yes. I brought you here last night. You don't remember? Spicing up this season's love scenes is new cast member Michael Nader. You found me? Yes. In an abandoned well on my property. How do you feel about putting in a 15 to 18 hour day? You were not naive. You knew that was going to be one. No, I was naive. I had forgotten. <laughs> Collective forgetting. Uh, yes, I had, no, I'd truly forgotten. You know, it's been many years since I've been back uh, in New York or in this medium, so I totally forgot. Uh, I, I could not handle that if that was the daily regimen. I have to uh, get back to, and they've assured me that it'll, it'll be a normal 12-hour day, which uh, everyone has to bear up and do. He knew exactly what was going on, and he made a decision, Eric, a decision, a conscious decision to help a friend. Oh. I decided to drop in on all my children to get a sneak peek of what life is really like for some of our favorite soap stars. She led him to the brink of the altar, promising a nice little family, little perfect family, and before his nose, he, it was just dangling there. His nose was dangling there, wasn't it? <laughs> Wait a minute. Tom. Wait a second. Yeah, Tom. You think it's all glitz and glamour? Think again. <laughs> Kelly Ripa plays Haley Vaughn, whose character this season has suffered through a car crash, two kidnappings, and an attempted rape. It's life, okay? It stinks. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, this is the epitome of a glamorous job. What would you tell them? <laughs> It'd be, uh, it would be more glamorous, probably, to uh, work in a coal mine. <laughs> not that that's a bad job. I wouldn't want those coal miners to get angry. But um, it's, it's not, especially for my character, it's not very glamorous. It's dirty. It can be downright dirty. And bruising. And bru oh, you should see the bruises. And she said, oh, sure. She oh, sure, huh? Time. You and don't love me. Sick. Playing the dual role of sisters Natalie Chandler and evil look-alike Janet Marlowe has meant double work for actress Kate Collins. Huh. Well, what do you think now? You didn't think I could pull it off, did you? So are you schizophrenic and flipped out from <laughs> doing that? I mean... Um, there was a, a day once when I actually was very confused. I've been pretty good up to now. <laughs> I had a day where I was really tired and I really didn't know which one I was doing. It was Janet or Natalie or Janet pretending to be Natalie or if it was me and but but not quite it's only been the one day. But sure, some days yeah, yeah, it's a little confusing. And two, three. Kate deals with the pressure by unwinding with a personal trainer three days a week. <laughs> My least favorite exercise. That's why we do so many of them. <laughs> Most people think this is the most glamorous job in the world. True, not true. If it's glamorous to have your hair and makeup done for you, then it's glamorous. Yeah. If it's glamorous to work 18-hour days, then it's not glamorous. It depends on your, your point of view. Because the actors spend the better part of their waking hours in the studio, they're very creative about decorating their dressing rooms. James Kybert, who portrays Detective Trevor Dillon, has created a home away from home. Well, when you spend 16 hours a day at a, at in, in one place, I figured I'd better do it upright <laughs> and, and go all the way. There are some, uh, some nights when I sleep here, uh, when, we're, when we go to 1 or 2 in the morning and we, we have to start at 7. So you know you work five days a week and you're here 12 or 15 hours a day and you've created a respite in this room. You have your paintings, you have your clothes hanging here, you have a microwave, a salad bowl. I mean, this is real life. Yeah, I figured I might as well make it home. <laughs> I was informed three, by three or four people last week that they'd voted my, my dressing room the dressing room of the show. To friendship. To friendship. <laughs> oh. Of course, I couldn't leave without paying homage to the queen of daytime TV, 
veteran Susan Lucci is rumored to be the highest paid soap actress. And I wondered what it's really like to play love vixen, Erica Kane. I, I, I just run upstairs and get a band-aid. I'll be right well, back. Uh, well, wouldn't it be easier if I just went with you? Fortunately, Erica Kane is a very um, unpredictable character and, and capable of doing or saying anything. That There's a challenge to that, mm -hmm. to doing that, but it also helps me grow as an actress. When you are that embedded in a character, can you go home and let it go? Oh, yes. I've never had a problem with that, fortunately. When I come into the building, I'm still myself. It's not until I walk on camera to, to play the part that I'm Erica. And when I leave, I'm, I'm not Erica either. When the newer members of the cast come to you for advice about what it takes to do this job every day, what do you tell them? Well, first of all, very frankly, nobody's ever come to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, she's very clever. She's managed to keep the daytime and makes these little forays into prime time. One of the few who's been able to do that. Yeah, she has been able to do that, and she's very, very happy in her career. She's been with the show for the total of 21 years, and, you know, what everybody says, whatever happens in real life, you can be sure that Pine Valley is here to stay, and it'll happen there, and too. It'll show up whatever there too. does happen. Infidelity, evil twin brothers, and murder coming back from the dead as someone else. Not Halloween, but that's the bread and butter of writing soap operas. And who writes this stuff anyway? How do they come up with it day after day? Well, we're going to get some answers today. To begin with, let me introduce you to Norma Monty. She's been a teacher, an assistant to the producer, a writer, and is currently the head writer of General Hospital. She's been involved in the world of soap operas for more than 13 years. Do you ever, Norma, come up with the answer for what to write next? No. <laughs> is it, That's always a, a sort of a teeter board. Is it, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting and uh, it's stimulating. And uh, you just wonder sometimes when you sit down at that blank paper, suppose I freeze, but it never quite happens. Never <laughs> happens. Also joining us today is Maria Arena. She's a writer on The Bold and Beautiful, a half-hour soap opera which uses the fashion world as one of its backdrops. So with a half-hour show, Maria, how much writing is involved in your job? Well, um, I co-write a script or two scripts a week, and um, there's only four of us writing the show, so it's kind of a tight-knit group, and uh, we all pitch in with story ideas, and we have a great head writer who makes the final decisions. Yeah. One more soap represented this morning. Kathleen Klein has been a writer on All My Children for six years. The show tapes in New York, but right now Kathleen is living in Texas, and why is that, and how do you make this work? Well, this is wonderful. This is why I write soaps. Um, my mother is not in the very best of health, and last year uh, it became obvious that we had to have some help down there so I was able to take my job with me so I went down to Texas and I'm living there helping my mother and my son is going to school and yet I'm still writing I'm connected by a, a computer and modem to New York so I'm able to write as well as live my life the same <laughs> amount of job your job didn't downscale uh, at all it, 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 a, little, a little bit a little tiny bit but yeah. that's okay Norma, you know what people are going to say, how do women get these jobs, or mm -hmm. how do you get this kind of job, mm -hmm. so how did you get yours? Well, uh, I happen to know the executive producer of General <laughs> Hospital. She was she's related sister. to you, isn't <laughs> she? Gloria Monty, yes. So that helped. Uh, but I had uh, been writing scripts in the 60s uh, with another writer, Bob O'Byrne, who happened to be my uh, brother-in-law, and uh, we had a whole new show that uh, was supposedly sold, and our agent, William Morris, just thought it was great, and the last minute, it fizzled. So then I went on to advertising, television, et cetera, and finally wound up here. And Gloria said one day, I need some help, will you help That's me? That's right, yes. And I said, well, all right, because I was uh, developing some shows, one of which was The Vineyard, Unfortunately, Falcon Crest just got there ahead of me. <laughs> That's your business. Maria, with focusing on the fashion world, does that make your job easier or more difficult because of the well, possibilities? It's easier for me because I grew up in that world. My family's in the fashion business, and Bold and Beautiful set two rival fashion houses in Los Angeles. And so I, since I had been a designer, um, that's kind of how I got my foot in the door for my job. So um, I've, I've loved drawing upon the characters I've seen in that business and coming up with a new, and weaving fashion into all our storylines coming up with And a you new have story. to be authentic. Even, oh, yeah. even though they're caricatures mm -hmm. of real life, there are things that need to be... I mean, we don't consider them caricatures. I mean, we consider them, they're very, very real people to us. And, you know, even though sometimes whatever happens in our lives may not seem, you know, what may happen to your next door neighbor, but actually it is. I mean, mm -hmm. if you really look at it closely. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's really, we really do, you know, 
keep it real, I mm -hmm. think. But Kathleen, research is very important. Oh, definitely. Think? Yeah. And having, yeah. you know, lived it and been a designer, I kind of know how these characters feel. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. obviously are writing for shows ahead of time. Um, Kathleen, what, what kind of time frame are you writing for right now, and how many a week? Okay, uh, I it? write a script a week, and uh, what I write will be seen <clears> on the air six weeks from now. So we're, we've got quite a jump. Uh, once it's into the pipeline, there's not a lot we can do to change things that aren't working. That's one disadvantage, but we really are very far ahead. Do I understand correctly that if, if somebody else writes the day before you, you may not know what they wrote? That's right. That's absolutely right. The script that I write, which airs, for instance, on a Friday, I have not seen uh, the script that airs the Thursday before that Friday. I have no idea how they have followed through, say, an emotional storyline that is very, very important and very uh, intense. Uh, we do have phone conversations between each other, mm -hmm. but there's no way I can do that. We leave it up to the editor, who's a very important person in, in our staff. The editor helps, you know, meld it together and make it blend. Yeah. And we all begin to think like each other, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all know each other's styles. If I know Susan is writing ahead of me, I sort of know the way she's going to go, mm -hmm. and then I'll check with her. But it's difficult. It is difficult to get a handle on it. Norma, yeah. what do you use to gauge the success of a storyline or the success of a character's particular direction? Mm -hmm. uh, the audience, the mail, the ratings. Um, and do you respond directly uh, to... Yeah, I respond to all the mail I get. Uh, but I, will you write according to somebody uh, really not liking a particular Oh, character? yes, and I'll say, well, um, unfortunately, you know, we can't please everyone. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, there are lots of people who like this. And just hang on, I'm sure eventually we'll get to something you like. And as the head right. writer, do you have that final stamp on anything that is created within General Hospital? Uh, with the producer. The producer is always the last word. Yeah. yeah. Maria, and maybe this isn't with The Bold and the Beautiful, but I know that sometimes there can be some lobbying that happens. With, For certain story with ideas? The, by the actors. Oh, by the actors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that, definitely, that definitely can happen. They can have instincts about, you know, what way their character should go. But on Bold and Beautiful, we're, we're writing very close to when we tape and when we air. We're, I'll be writing a script that I'll be taping in early next week. Oh, mm -hmm. And so we can really close. respond to what mm -hmm. we see on the air, how we see the actors relating. And if they come to us, you know, and they have strong feelings, of course <coughs> we listen. But they may not realize where we're going with a certain story. Are any of you aware of instances where the actors or actresses are kept separate from the writers? so that they don't try to influence too much? <coughs> well, uh, we, don't, um, we don't hobnob uh, with <laughs> yeah. the uh, actors. We're too busy writing. And um, also, um, we're quite a bit ahead. I guess we're between all my children, mm -hmm. bold mm -hmm. and beautiful, as far as how far ahead we are. And um, as Maria said, the actors really don't have a concept of where the story is going. That's what we always hear them and, say. Right. You know, they just know where they are. We're doing a murder right. story now, and nobody knows who the murderer is, including the murderer. Ah. And, um, but do you know now? Uh, oh, yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we know, and uh, today, I guess, our crew will know. But the ah. crew, we've been, you know, playing games, putting asterisks, putting killer, et cetera. Has the murder Sorry? happened? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, I can't happens. let you go without quickly each one of you giving me either a <coughs> character or a keyword to watch for in something that's coming up. And I know you can't give things away, but if you can tell me just one little tidbit. <laughs> Kathleen, can you say anything from all my children? Well, to watch I can for? say Erica. That's all I need to say. <coughs> and she's going to be very hot. Very hot. Very hot. Okay, Maria from Bold and Beautiful. Um, I think our triangle are, will continue to be playing out some dynamics in an important triangle with Ridge, who's kind of a focal character for a lot of yeah. viewers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Norma. Uh, we have Mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mac has uh, a very exciting uh, romance coming up with ah. a few women. Ah. So uh, that should be very exciting. And ah. then we have a um, uh, quadrangle oh. with Paul and Tracy. We and are in the 90s, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Thank you. It's delightful to have all three of you here. A lot of fun Thank to hear you. about your work. And it congratulations was such fun to be all here. Great yeah. work. Thank, Thank you. you.